What's up everybody, Dead Girl here. It's Saturday night and it's opening weekend for The Haunted Road. We're getting ready to head on out and check out this drive through haunt here new to Orlando, Florida. So come on, come with me, we're gonna go check it out. All right, so just so you guys are aware, when you're coming out to do The Haunted Road, it is a two lane road. <laughs> so one way in, one way out, um, traffic is backed up we have a later time slot. Ours was 9.40. Um, last night, opening night, they had some issues. They had a pipe burst, so they had to actually cancel the event. So they're trying to accommodate people from last night and tonight. So I'll be curious to see how long um, we're waiting. We haven't been waiting that long at all right now. We've only been here a couple of minutes and we're slowly moving forward. So yeah, just kind of be wary of that, be mindful. I know they tell you to get here like five minutes before your start time, um, but I would say to get here a little bit earlier, especially if traffic is gonna be like this and if it's a sold out night, definitely make sure you try to get here a little bit earlier than your planned arrival time. Update, <laughs> we've been in line for an hour and 20 minutes? At least. To try to get into the Haunted Road, um, we're on the corner of Lake Pickett right now. And the turn-in is, if you go up through the light and you hang a right, it's like to the left there. And traffic is backed up on this cross street so badly that... We're through a light with us now. <laughs> we're going to hang out through this red light while we don't move. Because traffic is coming from down that way as you see the shadow on my hand so traffic is coming this lake way to go road. here which is on lake picket we're coming from a side yeah. street which is tanner to come this way to hang that right onto picket now we are local and we literally live like down the road so for the time that it's taken us to sit here we could have driven to screaming stream and probably been halfway home by now just so you guys know so if you're coming out here and you bought your tickets, that's great, but you're going to be sitting in line for at least an hour and a half. Now, this is also a combination of two nights worth of reservations though, because last night they had to cancel due to a, they saying, or Sorry, a mask. pipe burst, um, whether or not that's what happened, who knows, but that's what they said. So if a pipe burst, okay, but then they doubled up everybody from last night to tonight, and this road's just not equipped for normal traffic, more or less what we're dealing with right now. So uh, yeah, sitting in the driver's seat now for almost, uh, what, oh, about an hour and a half? Yeah. For something that's 10 minutes from our house? This is awesome. Yeah. We're having a good time. We're, uh, it's how we wanted to spend our Saturday night. I'm just saying, I, 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 I kind of just want to go home and watch John Wick at this point which was on TV and is an excellent movie. If you haven't seen it, we went in a movie talk at this point. So I don't even know if we're going to get in. Um, it's 10.53 right now. So there's my radio clock. Now on their website for the Haunted Road, the last entry time is 10.55. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So I'm going to be honest with you. I have a feeling that when we get up there, they're probably going to turn us away. Please tell me no. And tell us no. Which at that point... We're going to go world star. We're probably going to, we'll have to leave because they'll ask us to leave, but I'm going to probably want a refund. <laughs> I understand that things happened last night and that it was very tough because they had to shut down. And if that's the case, again, I understand that. However, you should have stopped selling tickets for tonight because it's clearly overbooked and there's no one directing traffic. This guy way up here is, you can see, is off the side of the road. Trying to cut in. There so, goes. so we got one in. It's like Mad Max free for all, and the people that are coming from this way are cutting off anybody that's coming from where at, we're at to make that yeah, right hand they're, they're turn. Block the road when the light turns red, and I'm gonna go right in front of them. Yeah, and I'm trying not to shoot that guy's license plate. So that's kind of why I've got the camera down a little bit. But this is just to kind of show you guys what we're dealing with this evening. Um, now, whether we get to go through this haunt or not, I'm gonna post this vlog, just so that you guys get our experience. 
And the, the sad part is, is this is like a neighborhood. Like there's houses to the left, there's houses to the right. We just passed Christine a minute ago. Hey, Christine. We, hi, Christine. We just passed a good friend of ours, actually my maid of honor. We just passed her house uh, a few minutes oh, ago. Did. Keep moving, guys. Keep moving. So we're keep moving. We're trying Damn to move. Make the corner. There's people make on the, the corner, corner over make here. The fucking who corner. Are just Dude, what? what are you doing? language, Get back babe. Here. Get language. Back here. Let him. Sorry. He's going. Freaking corner. Corner. So as you guys corner. can see, this is a Kyle. Ball. Kyle, get over there. I don't know who Kyle is, but Kyle. <laughs> so it's. Uh, I'm yeah. Not cutting them off though. I yeah we're we're trying not to be those people like you know i i understand everybody at this point's patience is wearing thin people are a little heated because we've been sitting in the car forever i know people yeah, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna put it on i'm just gonna wait and then go probably have to go to the bathroom like i do i have to pee at this point i thought we would have been done and through already but again you know it, it's there was a hiccup last night that's creating this huge issue this evening I just kind of want to let you guys know what oh, we're bro, let him in. we're dealing with right oh, now. Oh, we got the red light. Don't you run that? Watch, red light, see bro. that light's turning red. Now earlier there were a bunch of people that were running the red light because they wanted to get in. So we gonna pull up here. So we're gonna we're gonna slide in. We're gonna try to pull up and see what happens. So you still have to go down this way to get in, and we're just chilling right now. So. Welcome to Traffic Central. So if anybody's trying to go home down Lake Pickett, Lake Pickett or South Tanner Road on um, Friday and Saturday nights during October and the first week of November, no. just don't take an alternate route because otherwise you're going to sit in this traffic for people that are trying to go to this haunt if you're just trying to go home. So yeah, just heads up. Um, we'll Here check back come. hopefully in not another hour and a half, but... We've been pulled up. This guy is going to try to cut us off. He is. I'm going to go because we're probably going to start There's cats out in the trying road, not to like be annoyed. Around. I don't know what they're walking around the road for. I don't either. I don't care. Not my monkey. Not my circus. So right now, we've actually turned on to the road where the turn is for the haunted road. It looks like there's people coming out. Oh, I hope they're not turning people around. There's people coming out yelling various things out of their vehicles. Which I will not repeat <laughs> right now. Because my goal is not to deter people from coming out and enjoying haunts. I want you to come out and experience things. But I also want to warn you that this is a... Foster cluck. A, a mess, just to be honest with you. Um, there's nobody out here trying to help with traffic. They should have probably gotten at least one police officer to come out and direct it. Because it's... It's rough. <laughs> it's... it's bad um come from the other direction people are freaking out yeah there there were folks literally outside of their cars like having a smoke just kind of Look walking behind us. next to their cars Show behind us. i can't really see behind us too well so let me try to zoom in Here, let me see it. there we go so way way back there are people still trying to get in see my side view? this is the husband's side view i'm gonna get hand him the camera so yeah, he can kind of get this. kind of see how many there's literally all the way back is what we're dealing with. And keep in mind that's this main road where, as you see, it's it's two lanes, and then there's that one road that we came off of. So it's it's rough. So there's there's the sign. So that's how you know you're at least almost there. So I guess this is the exit. Here the haunted the road exit entrance. So people were coming out the exit. So there were some people coming out of the exit. I don't know. I hope that we get in. It's 11 o'clock. We've been in line since nine for an hour nine. and a, over an hour and a half now. Yeah. Um, the car in front of us, we were chatting with them because they were standing outside having yeah, a smoke cool. break. They were awesome people. They had a 920 time slot and they've been waiting since nine o'clock. Yep. So they've been in line longer than us. And they're, they're still waiting to go in just like we are. The guys that are walking back right now got out of their car and walked down to talk to them, I guess. Oh. So people are actually getting out of their vehicles, which is dangerous on this road because people fly down this road 55, 60 miles an hour. Yeah, if you're coming, um, please, please, please stay in your car. Yes. Because people that are coming from, you know, from this way to, to come here drive like jerks. 
Like, they, they don't care. They'll run you over. It's just, stay in the car. Walking on the road is not a smart move. Um, they're grown men, so they do what they do. Just like I'm sure y'all do. But just be cognizant. Be aware. Keep an eye out. Because this road, people fly down it. Um, it's a back road. Yeah. So there's Painted Oaks Academy. <laughs> which they do horseback riding and other things. Um, you know, they also have a pumpkin patch here during the day. It's a drive through pumpkin patch. Um, they have a corn maze that you can pay a certain dollar amount to come visit. <laughs> the pumpkin patch you can drive through. The drive through pumpkin patch. <laughs> I, mean, I think we're going to skip that one. I actually want to go to pumpkin patch and walk around and, and pick a pumpkin instead of, like, pointing it from my car. But that's just me. So... Still in line. It's 11.05. We'll check back and see if uh, if we make it through. Um, quick tidbit. Fill your gas tanks up. When you get off of, if you're coming from the 408 or I-4, wherever you're coming from, um, I know the 408, before you turn down this road, there is a gas station. So hit up that gas station and fill your tank up because you're going to be here for a while just a heads up so yeah we'll check back in a bit and let you guys know what's going on so the line here at the haunted road continues the haunted line this is, the line so far has been the scariest thing of the evening it's been long pack your patience lots of patience and just be prepared because make sure you go pee before you come out here yeah we've got some friends that are in line that are looking for a place to squat right now and there's nowhere as you guys can see to go pop a squat and there's a police officer behind us just kind of hanging out in his vehicle i guess he's he's being security this evening but yeah so we're we're just hanging out. Coming up on two hours. Just so you know. Yeah. At least we've got some uh, Midnight Syndicate to keep us company. Yes. Which, as you all know, is the perfect soundtrack when heading out to any haunted attraction. Dun, dun. Nobody does it like Midnight Syndicate. No, they don't. And they make sitting here on somebody's property a little creepier. So, yay, spooky! I wonder if those barrels would work. I'm not peeing in that barrel. <laughs> it's not happening. I'm sorry. I wish they would have put some portalettes out here. Something. Just because the line, the wait is so long. Very it's nice It's been for us. Property. And it's only the second night. Yeah. So this is the second night. This is uh, September 26th. So as the season progresses, I can only imagine that the place will get busier. <laughs> um, so that's definitely a huge difference that I've noted right off the bat between Scream and Stream and the Haunted Road is that Scream and Stream has that restroom and a parking area. Um, the Haunted Road does not. So just be mindful of that. Well, Scream and Stream has a real bathroom too, not a port -a Look, I would take a port -a at this point. Yeah. I mean, nasty as it may be, I will. And I, I don't know if those cars are coming, if that's part of the exit, or if they just gave up hope and were like, we're done. They're part of the show. So I'm not sure. The haunted SUVs. Where they going? <laughs> we're making our own entertainment for you people right now. Because this is where we're at. We actually had some lady drive out and scream some things about the place that were not so nice. Um, so I'm hoping, hoping for the best. My expectations are low. She said um, something along the lines of all ye who enter abandon all hope or something around there. All yeah. Inferno action. Something similar to that. So I'm setting my, my expectations low. And I think that that will only make it better. And I always, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Update. Uh, it is 11.44 p.m. They just checked us in so we just got to the point where they actually scan your tickets um speaking with the gentleman he said that the sh 
the haunt itself or the show or whatever you want to call it is running 55 oh minutes so we'll be here for at least another hour the brake lights ahead of us are illuminating my face if you're wondering why I keep getting plunged into darkness it's because we're actually moving a little bit so that's some great news um run and road going in it's very very tight they have it as a two-lane road it it's it's tight just be wary um so yeah as we get closer we'll let you know how it is we'll actually show you some things because i'm going to be taking some video and some photos so you guys will get to see it hopefully not much longer that's why i love you guys sitting through this over two hours doing for you. i'm doing it for you partially for me because i wanted to see it but partially for you guys too so yeah We'll check back in a bit. So we finally made it in. We're getting ready to start the haunt. They have us at a stopping point. I have my mask on because my window is down. So they asked that if you are gonna have your windows down to keep your masks on. Tonight I'm sporting our Lord Vader because why not? Uh, yeah, so hopefully the next time I check in, I'll be shooting some video and we'll get to see this haunt. So we've just entered the haunted road and it's a bit trafficy as you can see. It looks like the figure eight. It feels like the figure eight if you've ever been to the Bithlo races. This is kind of what it feels like. <laughs> I don't know. We got this is the right station because it's it, stuff was coming through before. Try ninety two point seven. Just drive. All right, so we just passed a scene. They didn't tell us to stop. Um, there's no real direction, so I'm not real sure what's happening. So they've kind of situated us behind the scene. So we can't really see anything. Um, there's a bunch of cars back behind us. They have you park and turn all your lights off, and they've got a radio station. Um... So we're just waiting for the scene to start and hopefully we'll be able to hear them. So that was the first scene that we could not see because they parked us behind it, unfortunately. I have no idea what happened. We have no idea what happened. We have no idea what's supposed to be happening. Um, it looks like we're coming up onto the second scene now. We had to turn our car completely off so we couldn't even hear anything. Um, the car ahead of us had their volume up so we could hear a little bit, but it was very rushed as far as like the hearing goes. Um, our car, we have to turn off completely to get the lights to turn off, even the running lights. So it's just going to be an issue if you have a newer vehicle. Keep that in mind. So there's some things that we're just kind of driving by. Um, if we were able to leave the car on and still hear what was going on, it would be okay. But we still got parked behind the scenes, so we couldn't see anything. Oh, it stinks out here. It smells like... Uh, and poop. it smells like manure. I think it is manure. If your windows are open, just a heads up. So you might want to keep them closed oh, and keep the uh, air circulating. So yeah, as you can see, it's... I hope it doesn't not what I wanted it to be, and I guess we're parked now at this other scene where it looks like we're next to it. I don't know what we're doing. So I think this is our... Our second scene over here. So there's a scene over there in the distance that we were not able to see because we were parked behind. Um, yeah. None of I, the actors are mic'd, so you can't hear anything they're saying. Or if they were mic'd, we were so far away you couldn't hear anything with them. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what's going on. I don't either anymore. So we'll. We'll see. I think this is supposed to be another scene. So we've also learned that every scene has its own radio station. 
Um, unfortunately, they didn't tell us that at the second scene, so we got the audio from the first scene. Unlike Stream and Stream, where it's just one radio station the entire time. Yeah, this is, um... A cluster. Yeah, it's, it's more stressful than it is enjoyable right now, to be perfectly honest. The only thing that's been scary is how close they're getting to your car. Yeah, the actors do come right up to your windows. So if you've got your windows down, they come right up there. And you are very much off-roading, so just keep that in mind, too. And I think, I think we're coming up to a stop up here at that stop sign. I think we have to stop. Yeah. So we're at scene number four here at the Haunted Road. And again, every scene is a different radio station. Um, it's just not very enjoyable, unfortunately, right now. I don't know if it's just because they overbooked it, which is possible, but we're ending up on the backside of every scene. So we can't really hear anything. And we just now figured out that, um, yeah, the scene before this, every different scene has a different station. So pay attention to that. Look at the signs. <sighs> and just be ready. Be ready. So opening weekend, hopefully they work some of these kinks out. But these are some wicked issues we're seeing, just to let you guys know. They both died in a fire. This is our view. I think perhaps I may have lost We are unfortunately way past the scene. Yep. We're the first car out of at least 12. I was just trying to find my prince. I'm afraid he may have been injured from the fall. Sounds like you've had quite an ordeal. You must let us feed you. You know how to cook? We don't need to. The house feeds us. The house? Here, try this. Wait. This smells sweet, almost like gingerbread. Yes, mm, it's so delicious. <laughs> you were right, I am famished. I didn't realize how hungry I was. <laughs> Hansel and Gretel. Okay. So for those of you that don't know, every scene is a nursery rhyme that's been twisted just a little bit. Try and do enjoy it. The actors are doing a great job. The um, you know, volunteers or the people that are directing traffic are trying to do their best. It's just honestly there's too many people, it's a way oversold which unfortunately is making us a little difficult. Yeah. So here's our view for this next scene. Looks like some sort of cornfield. There was a scarecrow. So, yeah. Fear and travel north through the forest. You'll come across a lagoon and you'll find it there. The crows are back. So it appears that our actress from the first scene goes through every single scene with us. Rapunzel. 
It's Rapunzel. So she's legitimately leading us to the next scene, which is here. That looks like it would be neat, but we're going to get parked behind it, so we're not going to be able to see it. No. But at least we get to see Rapunzel awesome. <laughs> leading us to to the next scene. Keep an eye out for the stop sign. Which is kind of nice because it's it's dark and rough to see. Yeah, but I got to be able to get the real And it's like sugar sandy. And now it's foggy. And foggy. And I can't see. Where's she okay. at? She's ahead. There she She's is. right there. Okay. Just keep going. There we go. So yeah, so this is, it's, yeah. it's rough because they've got the fog machine effect going. And when you turn that corner, you can't see anything. You can't the back of it. see so. anything. So we're going to be parked in the back again. Yep, we should be looking for an exit at this point. Stop. She's doing a great job. Thank you. You're amazing. So she apparently is doing double duty and leading cars. So yeah, so this is where we're at for the scene. And this is where the scene is. So we might be able to see something this time. We're gonna try, fingers crossed. So there's two more scenes with this one and we are, again, way past we're way past everything there were some really cool looking bodies but they were rushing us to get us to park so we didn't unfortunately get a chance to see them um i'm gonna have to hit up some of our friends and see if you know they come through if they can shoot us some pictures of some of the the cool looking stuff that unfortunately we had to hurry by so that we could park the car so this is another scene that we're just gonna kind of hang out and Unfortunately, the wait for it to be completed because we can't see anything to enjoy the performances. And some of the, from what we've seen, the performances, the kids are doing, you know, the best job that they can do. The kids are really trying. There's this excuse of it's our first night or our second night. It's just, this is rough. Oh, uh, they overbooked it. They Last night they had an issue with the pipe bursting and I understand that. And uh, unfortunately they told everybody last night to come back tonight and that's just, that's created it to be I think a lot more busier than it probably would have been and we might have been able to see things a little bit better so unfortunately we will not be doing this again no. this is a one and done for us this season so sorry so we're this is how we're seeing what's happening we're literally looking in the side view mirror yep. I'm listening to this We can see one of the scenes. Magic that is hard to control. I felt responsible. I took you away to protect you from a world that forbids magic. Mm. And that necklace I gave you is just to protect you. It protects all of us from your powers. Well, 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 boys. Look at what we have here. Someone's not hiding from us, and it's finally out of the open. <laughs> It's 1.30 in the morning. We are on the way out. There are still people coming in. It took us about an hour to go through that experience. Um, we'll give you a full report when we get home. But yeah, we're heading out. So we're home. It's the next day. We got home around 1.30ish in the mm. morning. Was it 2? It was closer to 2. It was closer to 2. We All right. live 5 minutes away. From... We live 6 minutes away from the Haunted Road. Um, let's start with the good things. Just let's start with the good things. 
We had Midnight Syndicate playing in the car <laughs> before we got in. We did. We set we set our own ambiance mm-hmm. like we do when we go to any haunt. We had internet connection for the most part of the time. Yes. So we could go on to social media and play our games on our phone. While we sat in the car. Um, the company was amazing. It's like the <laughs> best riding partner to go through it with. I appreciate you very much. Uh-huh. It wasn't raining. No. Um, it, it was not raining. It wasn't raining. So... Um, the, we, we didn't do the VIP. We did not do VIP, we and pay. we're gonna we're gonna get to all of this stuff too. Um, that's 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 the pos- what positives do you have? Okay, so the the staff that was at the event, um, every one of the actors, and I'm not calling them. <clears throat> I'm not saying that they did a bad job no. for the script that they were given and what they had to work with these kids like, and I call them kids just because we're old, we're old. <laughs> I'm almost 40. All right. I'm old. Mm. Um, it's okay. But the, the younger people that were the actors, they, they tried their hardest. Um, they did the best with what they were given script wise. These people were out there in the heat, in the elements, in the woods, in the Kind of woodish. It wasn't really woods, though. It was like a giant open field thing. Right, but there's still bugs out there. There's still bugs and stuff. So everybody with what they were given to work with did a phenomenal job. I don't want to take anything away from any of the actors that worked at this event because they they really did. They did the best that they could do. Um, People that were out there directing traffic, again, best they could do. Did the best that they could do. Um... So, so yeah, so staff-wise and everyone that we encountered, and whether it was the actors or the people directing you on where to go and how to get there, phenomenal job. So kudos to you guys for doing the best that you could do with what was given. Definitely. I'll second that about the actors. They were putting their heart out there. They were jumping around. I mean... Very gotta... energetic for being out there at 1 o'clock in the morning. Exactly. You think they've been doing that probably since about 8 o'clock or earlier. Yeah. Trying to run through those scenes. And we found that actors actually ran through the entirety of the haunt with you through each scene. So the main actress yes. that's in it. Rapunzel. Rapunzel, who had short hair. I was, Stop. I Stop. But, um... <laughs> Technicalities, all right. The actress that played Rapunzel ran from you from scene one through all ten scenes. Like, literally, she went with your party. So, it, it was like they had different Rapunzels that would go throughout the different scenes with you. Um, and she did great. I mean, yes. to your point, the actors did what they were given to do. Yes. You know, if, if this had been a fringe play that we had gone to see... Yes. I would have totally sat for the hour and watched it, and when I got done with it, would have been able to follow it and been like, okay, that was kind of cool. Yeah. I, I had no problem with it. Yes. And that that's another good thing. It was an hour, so at least it was long. It wasn't like 10 minutes or 5 minutes, It it because you stopped at every scene, and there were 10 scenes. But let's let's back it up a little bit. So the... The drive-in? The drive-in... Again, we live six minutes away. For a six-minute drive, it took us over two hours and 20 minutes to get onto property. Now, that means that we literally sat in park, in traffic, for two hours and 20 minutes playing on our phones. I played Pokemon Go. I played some other phone games. I checked out Facebook, watched some YouTube videos. JD was amazing and drove so that I could film this event and share it with you guys. Um, yeah. So two hours and 20 minutes-ish, roughly, of now, being on a paved road. Yeah, and now we came in through the South Tanner Road, which is there's two ways to get... Actually, there's three ways. There's three ways we could have possibly gone to the haunt. We could have come from our house. If we'd have taken that road, people would have lost their minds because there was no traffic that way. Yeah. But it wasn't an official entrance. Um, they and wanted you to come in from the other direction. That's where the sign was at. That's how we, we go in. Yes. 
Instead of coming straight down Lake Pickett, though, we went up South Tanner because we figured we could make that right. I think it's South Tanner. Either South or North Tanner. Either way. One of the Tanners. One of the Tanners. <laughs> But, um, hi Tanner. Um, <laughs> yes, hi Tanner. <laughs> the uh, so we went up. We actually went past a friend of ours, Christine and Chuck's house. So yes. we sat in front of their house for about thirty minutes, roughly, and waved out the window to them <laughs> in the darkness. In the darkness, we um, knew they were right around that area. But um, yeah, so we took that up route. So I mean, there were two ways to go up. So that means that when we got to the T intersection, we were basically taking turns with the other people trying to make that right to get into close to where the turn-in was. People were getting heated. People were very upset. And again, you're on paved public road. Um, going down to Lake Pickett, it's a two-lane road, as I said earlier in the video. So you have people going this way and people coming this way. And that's it. There's, there's, that, that's literally it. They should have had someone out there helping with traffic because it, it was a mess mm -hmm. going in and there were a lot of people now granted I'm, I'm going to benefit of the doubt here and it could have been because their opening night which was Friday night um, they shut it down because a pipe break that's the story that everyone is being told so benefit of the doubt okay they were still selling tickets to, for Saturday on Friday they were telling people on Friday to come Saturday so between selling your Saturday tickets, which they eventually stopped selling um, yesterday, like in the middle of the day, and everybody from last night, it was as ridiculously packed. I don't know if it's going to be that way, you know, every weekend, but make sure that if you're coming from like the 408 or I-4 or before you get onto Lake Pickett, fill your gas tank up. Use the restroom. And use the bath. That's the other thing. Don't drink while you're waiting in line. No. Um, there. So once you actually get to turn into the property, we sat for another 45 minutes. There was a police officer in there once you get on property. He could not see the road, so he didn't know what was happening with traffic, and people were running red lights and doing all kinds of crazy things. Um, he really had no no clue what was happening. So he was, he was just, just kind presence. of he was just there to be a presence is, is kind of what that felt like. So 45 minutes into sitting on this dirt road, we get checked in. Gentleman was very nice. We asked him what, how long the the haunt, and it's not a haunt, just to be clear right now. It, it was not a haunted attraction. There was nothing scary, nothing Halloween, nothing spooky about it. The advertising was fantastic, but it's not what it is. So we sat on this dirt road that is basically a one-lane road that they turned into a two-lane road. Mm -hmm. And you had to be very careful of driving. And that's why on their website, they tell you that your vehicle can only be so big because that road is not made for larger vehicles because they have traffic going in and out the same same lane, basically. Not to mention they have the people that are checking you in in the middle of the two no lanes. So yeah. you have a one lane area that's been turned into two lanes. And now you've got people standing in between the cars coming and going. Somebody's going to get hurt out it's there. It's dangerous. It, it's one of the first things we saw where we were thinking, this is dangerous. It wasn't, wouldn't be the last thing we'd see that yeah. we thought was dangerous. But. So that, that, was, that was the first thing. And we asked the gentleman, we said, you know, is there a restroom? Because we were in line for an hour, two hours and 45 minutes at that point. And he said, well, yes, but no. So they had a portage on out there. That, did you see it? No, I did not see, by the way. I, we did I not see it. See it but I benefited the doubt. They had a portage on. And they said that they were allowing guests to use it due to the circumstance of how busy they were. Now, plenty of people bought tickets for shows for the next couple of weeks. And the online presence from people saying that they had tickets, but they weren't, you know, they were in a couple of weeks. So I'm assuming they're probably going to be just as busy. So they're going to need to do something about that bathroom situation and communication. Because there's no communication up until two hours and 45 minutes from us from when we checked in. That was the only communication that we had with them. Um, there's no Facebook presence. There really wasn't much happening. I posted on Twitter that like we were sitting in traffic and they responded with thanks for your patience, mm -hmm. which is great. But let people know if you're running behind, if you're overbooked, be honest so people know what to expect when they get there. Um, you also had to reserve a time slot. <laughs> I don't know why, because... Again, our time slot was 940. 
we got in line at like 9 20 because we figured it's going to be busy you know we wanted to get there and they tell you to get there five minutes early and if it's five minutes before your slot and if you're there any earlier you need to get back in line they weren't checking times because again oversold due to the night before and due to saturday's um ticket sales and they weren't even checking times or acknowledging times at all they, they were scanning your tickets but that was it yeah um so then as we pulled in to get ready to go into the haunt, it was, we st they stop you before you go in to wait. Off to the side, they had the photo experience that you could buy. The photo experience was a, a, a banner that said the haunted road. Your vehicle pulled up behind the banner. You could roll your window down and stick your face out. And yeah, so she yelled out, roll down your windows. <laughs> she, they, they had people roll their windows down so they could stick their heads out and smile and do whatever they did. And they would take the picture and then they would maneuver the car to get back in line with the rest of us. Um, now, when they maneuvered the car to get back in line with the rest of us, there was no preferential treatment. That was the VIP that they were doing. Yeah. They just put them back in line wherever. wherever. So if you'd have been waiting three hours in line, two and a half hours in line, then you get pulled out for your VIP picture. Photo. And now going back in line, you're behind people that were behind you yeah. previously in the line. So you're now even farther back than you were before, which would have been a great thing as long as you weren't first in line. Yes, the curse which of first we in learned. Line we'll talk about. Which we learned. But, um, mm -hmm. but from everything, because I went online and I was reading some of the comments, because they don't have the reviews on their Facebook page, but in some of the photos, like their sold out photo from last night, there are reviews and they're atrocious. There's a lot of people um, talking. Apparently when they were doing the photos, they weren't giving people any information. They weren't handing them a photo. They were just taking the picture and moving along. So They weren't taking their name or their information or anything. I don't know how any of you guys are going to get your pictures. I hope that you get them. Maybe they'll do a giant face Facebook album and say here's all the photos go find yours I honestly don't know how these people are gonna get their pictures um, so if you paid for that upgrade I'm sorry um, okay so they finally let us go through the haunt we were first in line they set us we were in second in line to start we were first in line to go through the haunt um, they were putting us in groups of 12 cars which was too many to the point where they, it was supposed to be set up to where each scene was like a semicircle. So they, they had a stop sign set up. You would stop. They made you put your car in park. You turned off your headlights. Every scene had a different radio station, which we found out about three seats in that that was the case. Cause they don't really tell you that they just told, told us the first station um, at check-in. So Set up, we parked, we ended up parked behind the first scene, as you guys saw, so we saw nothing. Um, couldn't hear anything, because at that point we had to turn our car off. Um, because we have a one of the newer model cars where their running lights are a little bright, so we had to turn it completely off, so we got no sound. So we couldn't hear anything from the first scene. Once that scene is over... Well, hold on. Before the scene ended... We could see a little bit. Like, we couldn't hear anything that was happening, but it looked like... Well, we had to turn around in the car. Yeah, we had to So, we literally like, had to physically to, do this which, to try to see. Which, on a bladder that had been sitting for almost three hours, isn't fun. Um, yeah, no. We turn around and we look, and there's some kind of conversation going on between two girls. There's a guy up top. The guy falls down on what looks like a stunt bag. Yes. What was terrifying was around the stunt bag, there were fence posts that had points on them. Wooden fence yeah. posts with points. Not the way you want to secure a stunt bag or have around because if he slips when he goes to fall, he's going to get impaled. It's going to be bad. It looked like an OSHA violation beyond anything I'd ever seen. I was like, how are they letting this go? So that's, yeah. that's, that was the first scare I got of the night was watching a guy fall inches away from a fence post that could very easily go right through him. Yeah, it was it was not the ideal situation no. for us or the especially for the actor. No, we I was we were actors. both concerned for the actors. So, once the scene ends, um the radio kicks on like their I guess their ambiance music that they have played before the actual scene starts because every scene was pre-recorded so it all played over the radio station. They had tech sets, um, tech tents set up at random areas to control those scenes on when they would start. And kudos to the tech guys mm -hmm. 
you guys did great. You did the best that you could. Um, I know, you know, I was reading some things about, you know, breaks and stuff like that. So I, I don't know. We didn't witness certain things. So for the tech guys that stuck it out and did the best they could, you know, thank you guys. You guys, you guys were amazing. So thank you for, for running that smoothly. Yeah. Once we knew what radio stations we were supposed to be on, they worked. Yeah. We could we hear could, everything. We could hear it. Which was great. We just couldn't see everything. Yeah. Um, so as you saw in the videos, it, it's it was hard to see most mm. things. Um, I think a lot of that had to do with the fact of how many cars were going. Yeah. When we started, we had a Congo line of 12 cars. I think we increased to 16 at some point. At one point, there were 16. Somehow, I don't know how it happened, we but somehow we gained additional cars. This, the where to stop and start isn't very clear. Nobody really tells you where to stop and start. There's these tiny little signs. They're stop signs, little essentially. Baby stop they're signs. They're small stop signs. And there are some people with flashlights, but in certain scenes, if you don't see the stop sign, you could very easily just keep going past the stop sign. There's nothing to stop you. You'll end up in another person's group, and then you're going to totally miss one of the scenes going through. Yeah. Which might not be a bad thing. But it was, it was rough. I mean, it was very rough. if they'd had that stop sign back and maybe six cars... I think everybody through that little loop could have yes. actually visibly seen what was happening in that scene. But to put yeah. us as far up as they did so they could cram as many cars as they did in. It was not good. We weren't, we didn't see anything. And again, I understand it was clearly oversold due to what happened the night before, but they should have stopped selling tickets that night for the next day, knowing that they were going to have people come back and it was going to be that oversold. Um, the groups were just, and even with 12 to 16 cars in a group, they went well past at least three o'clock this morning and we'll get into that too they should have taken a vehicle and drove it around and taken it in the car and actually stopped it at where they were putting their stop signs and seen if they could actually physically see anything that was happening in the scene just I, by doing that you would have automatically known that you were putting the first person in line at a disadvantage to to see anything at that point i don't think it mattered because they were just trying to get people through it to, to be totally honest with you um so once that scene ends then they prompt you with their little flashlight to tell you to go to the next scene, which is fine. So they did. So or Rapunzel starts walking in front of you. <laughs> the night went on that way. So through, I want to say six scenes, we we went that way. Um, there were a couple of times where we could kind of see some stuff, but not really. We could hear it. So to be honest, um, it was hard to turn around on a full bladder. And even when we turned around, we couldn't see. At one point, we were watching stuff through our rear view mirror. Okay. We see it. And we were listening to it and I was on Facebook. Yep. Because I couldn't I could not see anything. Um let's talk about driving. <laughs> J JD was kind <laughs> enough to drive for me uh, at, at the both drive through haunts that we did, oh. Scream and Scream and, and the Haunted Road. So he's been okay. awesome because it lets me film, it lets me take pictures. So I'm... tell us how the driving was and Again, thank you so much for driving. I'm glad that we took my car, not the truck, because the truck honestly would have been too big to do some of them turns. I don't care. I would have loved to have my truck because I could have bogged around those corners and told them how mad I was with the exhaust. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm really glad we have an SUV for this whole experience of both of them. Yes. Um, the Haunted Road versus Screamageddon driving-wise. No, we didn't go to Screamageddon. Scream oh, no, Screamageddon. Scream and Stream. I'm sorry. Scream and Stream. Yeah, we... No. <laughs> no Screamageddon. No. Scream and Stream. So Scream and Stream. When we went through Scream and Stream, it had rained for a few days. So conditions were probably as bad as they could have possibly been out there with it yeah. being as wet as it was. It was easier to navigate areas that had torrential rain for multiple days than it was to go through the uh, dirt bike path that we went through last night. It's kind of what it felt like it if a dirt bike path was sugar sand. It was hair yeah. point, like hairpin turns, tight serpentine all the way around this wonderfully, horribly lit area with these weird little flags that you could sometimes see, sometimes not because they've been run over. Um, yep trying to keep enough momentum going so your vehicle didn't get stuck in the sugar sand which was fine through the first six scenes or so yeah it wasn't the first six scenes are it's we can it's keep our pace drivable and it actually had like rutted out grass so you could drive through it and then you get to a point where you're feeling your tire slipping 
as you're trying to go through, hoping you don't get stuck. Yeah. But again, the previous scenes, you could go fast enough to get through. And it was fine. When we got to around the sixth scene, the girl that was playing Rapunzel just started walking in front of my vehicle. Okay. Or our vehicle. Before we even get into this, let me just say this right now. Anytime you put anyone in front of a moving car in those kind of conditions, it is extremely dangerous mm -hmm. for that actor and for that individual because of a the traction issue and our tires are brand new by the way we have brand new tires they're not worn i mm -hmm. we just bought the vehicle they are brand spanking new so there is plenty of tread when you put an actress in front of a vehicle and you have that vehicle follow the actress and the vehicle can only go like three miles an hour because again we didn't want to hit her but there was when she first started walking there is a turn that they decided to have fog effects coming in. And lasers. And lasers. You cannot see anything in front of you when you hit a specific corner. And I think it was the scene where she's talking to um, like a prophet, like a seer. It, it was that particular scene where she's talking to the seer. And when you make that turn, because again, they portrait us in the back of the scene. When you make the turn to go around it, you can't see. Right. But... That's just, it's, it's crazy. I mean, on a paved road, I wouldn't want an actor or actress standing in front of us. No, God, no. When we were first talking about the whole drive through haunt attraction idea, one of the biggest things we were worried about was the safety of the actors. Yes. When we saw it with Scream and Stream, the actors were all six feet away from the car, at least. Nobody got to the point of your car where they could have possibly been hit or they could have been hurt. And they were on the side. They, they were, were not the in front of your vehicle. Or they were up a little bit from where you were at. Right. But everything was totally visible there. With the Haunted Road, the actors were getting right up on your car. We had people in our rear view mirror. We had people yelling and screaming at us. We had... A little too close a, for comfort. A, a, in the car. All right. With our windows down. Now... Let's put it this way. In the yeah. reviews on it, a person actually commented that one of the guys in the mask slung his head and it was close enough that when he slung his head, his sweat went into her mom's eye. So if you think about how close yeah. you have to be to sling sweat on somebody's face, they're not following the proper distance protocols as far as being six foot from where you're at. Even if both people have masks, I don't want somebody yelling and hollering right here near me. It's, it's just, just gross. It, it's, it's gross, number one. But let's let's get back to the driving. We went a little off right. on, off track on that. So, so the driving, yeah. That turn is extremely dangerous mm -hmm. for not only the actress who is leading the way while she's walking, but for the driver trying to see. As the passenger, I was trying to help him navigate it, and I was like, just cut the wheel. Just, just cut it because you could not see in front of you and you couldn't see where the road was because of the fog and the laser effect. And although it looked cool, it's not safe. Well, there's another thing too. You've got other vehicles driving around the paths as you're going through all of this. Yes. Some of them have their lights on, some of them don't. So as you're going around these curves that are non-existently marked, you've got cars coming from other directions with their headlights now in your face. So not only am I getting blinded by somebody else's headlights, I have no visible markers to go around a dirt corner that if I stop, my vehicle's going to get stuck. Yeah. Now, they told us and told everybody that before you start on the haunted road going through all of this, if your vehicle breaks down, you have to wait until the end of the night before they'll let any tow vehicles come in and actually get you out. I can't imagine. I foresee somebody getting stuck in the sugar sand on one of these turns not being able to get out, and they're going to have to get some kind of tow. I don't know how a tow truck would even get back in there to get it to pull them out of that spot. They're going to have to winch it out or something. It's just, it's a recipe for disaster. And with this only being the second night that it's open, those roads are going to get, those dirt paths are going to get worn worse. down to the point and just get worse and worse. And if it rains, oh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be out there in no, anything no, less than no. a four-wheel drive with a front winch to pull me out because... It's going to get bad. At one point, driving through, I think it was the second to last scene that we were coming up on, they actually have, like, plywood and cardboard down because that area of the road is so bad we're to prevent you first. from getting stuck. I, I don't know. <laughs> so it, it was difficult because we couldn't see anything. We could only hear from what we could see with the actors. Again, 
kudos to you guys for giving your all and doing your thing. Kudos to the yeah. tech guys for giving their all and doing their thing. Even the people directing traffic, you know, great. Um, the happiest we were of the entire night was when we saw the exit sign. Yeah. Which I hate to say that. And it's a horrible thing to say because this is supposed to be a Halloween haunted road experience. Again. Four hours. Four hours. Four, this is a four, four hour hours. experience. Um, I would have been extremely angry had I paid because it was $15 a person. And then on top of that, if you wanted the upgrade, it was $79. <laughs> I would have been extra. I was mad paying 30. I would have been even more angry paying 79. Now $30 for an hour long haunt experience is great. It's fantastic. This was not a haunt experience. This is a hostage situation. <laughs> this, this was a, this was a play. Yeah. This was a production that was put on. Every scene was acted out by the actors, lip synced basically because, you know, they, they had to pre record. And I understand that. I totally get that. And I can respect that because you're saving the actor's voice. However, that, there was no way to project it. They there, would have had to project it yeah, on the Yeah, there each were no mics or stations. anything. In, in that. I don't know how they could have done it through they the 10 radio stations they had to run it through. They would not have been able to. That just, yeah. So, had they built this as a theatrical production of mm -hmm. like you're going to see a play because that's what it felt like it felt like yeah. we went to see a play like a fairy tale based yeah. play it and we, had nothing to do with horror no and and they were like and it's billed as well, it's a twisted tale on fairy tales it's not that twisted mm -hmm. if you're going to do a twisted tale on a fairy tale it needs to be scary if I you're going to make Ms. it scary getting eaten by a spider yeah it like, needs to be give us scary yeah now i'm not making the comparison between this haunt and something like horror nights because no. they're in very different leagues and very different levels however horror nights did do scary tales twice they did a fantastic job because it was scary well it's close proximities too it was going through an actual haunt where oh. if you're going through a haunted house you can set up these scenes and you're only seeing them for a few seconds as you go through from scene to scene to scene, it's the reaction, reaction, reaction. But what we went through last night, there was no reaction. But was... the story was not scary, was my point. Yeah, right. As Horror Nights, it was a scary story of things being twisted and, like, Miss Muffet getting eaten and Hansel and Gretel actually, like, eating the witch and Rapunzel's, and hair, Rapunzel's or... hair, like, going crazy and taking people out. Like, very different. So if you're going to do something like that and build it as a haunt, you need to make it scary. This was not scary. No. They changed some of the story with Rapunzel, and, and which is fine. But to build this as a haunted and Halloween attraction was very misleading to every customer that purchased a ticket to this event. It's very disheartening as someone who absolutely loves horror and haunts and Halloweens to be marketed to to come to our event it's the haunted road it's scary and the wolf's gonna get you and and i get it it wasn't even halloween themed but it it <laughs> there was nothing about it that said halloween or haunt or scary other than the marketing which marketing did a phenomenal job they really did they marketing did great in the sense to make you think that it was going to be a scary haunt now the fear factor that they played on for this were people running up to your car they had people creeping around that would bend down and get up and pop up right next to where you're parked. So, I mean, that was their scare factor. It didn't have anything to do with the story as far as why you were being, why they were jumping at you or why they were popping up. But in today's world right now, having people in that close of proximity, for them to rely on that to be their only scare factor for this whole thing, it's a matter of safety. And if you want to feel unsafe, then yeah you'll get scared because they're breaking that barrier and literally right in your face. A they're breaking times, your personal bubble. We had to roll the windows up at a couple points because yeah. of the fact that we did not want them slinging their sweat and getting up inside of where we're at. Yeah. Now, any other year, had they taken this concept and did something else with it, having people pop up around you would have totally been fine. But for what's happening right now, relying on that to be the only scare factor that they can do, I think is just unsafe and not necessary. Again, it's if you go into this, um, it's go in knowing that this is a play. This is a theatrical mm -hmm. production. It's something yep. that's put on. Again, you know, 
great job for the actors and the text, but it's just not scary, and it's not Halloween. And if you bought a ticket thinking that it's a Halloween event and it's going to be scary, I'm sorry. It's like going in to see Sweeney Todd and not knowing it was a play, expecting to see all this cool blood and gore, and then you sit through that, and you're just like, wow. This was worse than Sweeney Todd. This was... Yeah, but there's a lot of people that like Sweeney Todd. And I'll be honest with you. Had this been billed as a theatrical production, Mm -hmm. I would have still gone because it's very close to our house. Exactly. It would have been something fun to do on like a date night, you know, something something fun like that. I would have been fine with that. Yeah. It was billed incorrectly. It was very misleading. Communication is rough. It just... I'm sorry, but... To me, is this being a haunted attraction? It is a fail. Yep. I don't like giving bad reviews. Mm-mm. I don't like bashing things. We're just being honest. I'm being this isn't even very, bashing. very honest with we you guys and upfront because we did want to like it. We wanted to have a good time because we, we just, we need the haunt season and the scary stuff in our lives. Yeah, I was just going to take this off. Like, you know, so it's, <laughs> it just, it was. It was disappointing. Yeah. To circle back, though, again, guys, we are not bashing the actors no. or the techs or no. the people out there trying to direct traffic. You guys did the best with what yes. you were given. So thank you. Exactly. We appreciate you. We appreciate the effort and the time that you took, especially we know you guys worked crazy hours last night. I don't even know how they could have given you breaks with as many people as we're going through yeah. there if you even got any. Um, I've worked in the haunt industry previously for like four years. I know I, behind the scenes what it takes to make one of these things move or watch, you know, the things move. I don't know how they even got through last night, honestly. I'm surprised at some point they didn't just pull a bar rescue and shut it down and get everybody out of line and let everybody go. Um, so I, kudos to you guys for sticking in there yes. and for staying out in that heat. We're staying out in the exhaust. That's the other thing. That's something that you know you really don't think about. The car exhaust. The car exhaust. That you're breathing in. You've got all, all day those long. kids that are out there. When I say kids, they're probably between the ages of 17 and 25. Looks like it was the mean, you know, the mean age that was out there. Um, I just I don't know how you're going to get through this whole season with that many vehicles spitting out exhaust. There's going to be some kind of methane issue, or not methane, but. Uh, carbon dioxide issue. <laughs> Methane. It'll be some kind of carbon dioxide issue with kids breathing that in. I can see people getting lightheaded because yeah. that's a lot of vehicles to be circling you, to be breathing in. I mean, just... Yeah. Because your car's just in park. It's not turned totally off. Right. So just be careful out there. Um, yeah. our, our hearts go out to everybody that's working out there as far as the actors go. Hopefully next season we'll be back to normal and you guys can go back to Halloween Horror Nights. You can go back to the independent haunts that are great, that yes. we love. Yes. And you can continue scaring and don't stop scare acting. We appreciate you guys. We yes. know what you do and what you put into it. So, And we know the effort. We yeah. know the hours. Totally. We, we get it. I was fortunate to work with JD a couple of years mm-hmm. on, on a haunt. So I, I saw firsthand how long, you know, they ran, what breaks were like, what makeup was like, the back of the house, the front of the house. Like I got to see everything. And that's something that most people are, will never experience. And it was very eye-opening and it gave me a huge appreciation for what you guys do. So just how early you have to be there to get things rolling and even to get costume on. I mean, it's there. We could go on and on for yeah. hours. And if, and if you're listening this long at 30 minutes in, you know, we of us you. just chatting. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, to everybody that worked the event, thank you guys. Thank you for staying late to get to the last car. And again, we left after like one fifteen, one thirty ish. And there was still a line out to the road, even like on the dirt path. And when we ended at that last car, it would have been 45 minutes for them just to get in. So I can only imagine how late you guys were there working. So thank you for giving people the opportunity to go in that waited in their car for eternity. <laughs> now, somebody made a really good point on one of the comments saying that, you know, if you go to Halloween Horror Nights, you could wait two hours for a house. Yes. So that's totally plausible. But yeah. standing in a line for two hours is different than being out on a country road for two hours where you've got the locals trying to get home, people just trying to move around, people trying to go to the grocery store, or to the people bathroom. trying to, yeah, having to use the restroom. Bathroom. You could actually get out of line at Halloween Horror Nights, go use the restroom and come back. And go back. This, you kind of need a trail bag or something to be able to. There uh, was no restroom. <laughs> and there was really no woods to pot. go find a, find a bush to pee in Yeah, don't either. pee on the side of the road like no, Pickett. There, there are cops out here occasionally, so you don't want to get caught with dropping trowel. But um, yeah. 
Yeah. I think one of the comments summed it up the best for this. They said that um, if 2020 was a haunt, it would be the haunted road. It would be the haunted road. So I whoever that, but... made that comment, you're you're kind of spot on yeah. as far as it being a haunt goes. Again. Yeah. Just as if it was billed as a theatrical experience, and if that's what I was expecting, I would have enjoyed it and had I been able to see it, had they limited it to like six cars instead yep. of the twelve that they did. So again, you know, it it was a very rough night. I hope, 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 hope that things get better as the run continues. I hope that it, it really does. I really do, but I just I want you all to know that unfortunately this is not a haunt. This is not a haunted attraction at all. No. You could throw some blood on it, it still wouldn't be haunted. It still would not be a haunted attraction. So mm -hmm. I think that's going to do it for us. Um, would I recommend it as a haunt? No. Is it a good theatrical experience? That's something that you probably will not see again? Yes. Could, um, they, could they take it to Fringe and do it as a performance? Yes, definitely. Totally. And it would actually probably go over pretty well yes. for what it was. It would be a very great Fringe performance. Performance. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately this just, it, it did not work out. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, it's, it's what it is at yep. this point, guys. Um, thank you guys for watching, for sticking it out through the end of this. I know this was kind of long, a little bit longer than we intended, but we just wanted to, to give you guys our honest opinion and what happened last night for those of you that wanted to know, cause I've been getting messaged on Facebook. So yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, remember to keep it spooky.